Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Yo, mama in the fucking stand! So then my brother brings home this red, because remember, Rapper's Delight was light blue with the rainbow on it. It's very attractive mm-hmm. when you look at the Sugar Hill logo. Right. Then my brother comes home, it's just this bland, red labeled record that said Enjoy Records. And on it, it said Grandmaster Flash. Oh, that's the guy from the tape yeah. thing. And the fur is five. I was like, what the hell is that about? So we put the needle on it. Now, remember, we talked about Rappers of Light was three guys rapping long. One guy rap an hour, next guy rap an hour, other guy rap yeah. an hour, other guy rap another hour, yeah. and then it's yeah. over. Yeah. But this record, this is what changed my life. I'm Grandmaster Get High first, pretending in my right. basement. I put the needle on this record. Rappers of Light opened up like it, it was a hip. Hop, the hip, the hip, the hip, the which was blew your mind yeah. when you yeah. heard that because yeah. we never heard this. But this record, I put the needle on this. It's a Grandmaster Flash and a Furious Five. You know, with the dust. This shit said, it was a party night. Everybody was breaking. The highs was screaming and the bass was shaking. And it won't be long to let everybody know that Flash is on the B-Box going. And I'm like, what the fuck? What the shit? And, and then it goes, and shout out now. And then a voice goes, Italian, Caucasian, Japanese, Spanish, Indian, Negro, Vietnamese, MC, <laughs> disc jockeys, y'all, fly kids for the young ladies. And then the beat drops and he's introducing the crew. You got to see to believe. And then five different voices. We're one, two, three, four, five MCs. One voice said, I'm Melly Mel and I rock it so well. And then the second dude said, and I'm Mr. Ness because I rock the best. And then the third dude said, Raheem, and all the ladies dream. And then the fourth dude said, cowboy, and I make it jump for joy. And then the fifth dude said, Creole. And then the other four dude said, solid gold, kid Creole, playing a role, dig this, where the furious five plus Grandmaster Flash, giving you a blast, a show enough class. So to prove to you all that was second to none, we're going to make five MCs sound like one. Give me a pin. That's me running through the house. Mommy, mommy, give me, I got to do that. And I just sat down and started writing rhymes. That day I became Easy D. Because my <laughs> name is Daryl. It starts with a D, but yep. it's easy for me to do this. Easy D. So I just started writing rhymes. Easy D is like, hey, by the way, that's a pretty, that's a I good know. name. I like It's easy really D. good. Yeah, yeah Easy D really is a good, good name. So I became Grandmaster Get High and Easy D in All my in one. <laughs> right. So here's where Run comes in. In eighth grade, we're in eighth grade now. Remember the one rim in the schoolyard? Yeah. So, in eighth grade, out of nowhere, I mean, I made it from kindergarten all the way to eighth grade without any new students coming to the school. All of a sudden, in eighth grade, this guy, David McEachin, I'll never forget, this new student comes, he's seven feet tall. He probably wasn't that tall, but he was yeah. like taller than Jabbar, but he was. <laughs> but he wasn't, but he was to us. Right. He dunks on the one rim in the schoolyard and he breaks it. Whoa. So we, you know, oh, that was incredible. No, we cried. <laughs> we, can't, we can't go to the park now. But hold on, behold, I got the best parents ever. My father put a basketball room in my, in my backyard. Oh. So now the kids, usually 10, 11, 12 kids would come to my backyard to play basketball after school. One particular day, Joseph Simmons comes along mm-hmm. with his basketball and his curly hair. We play basketball, and then usually... When we played basketball in the backyard, I would go and get the Dixie Cups. Remember Dixie Cups? Yeah. And I get the pitch of water because the rule was when there's no adults home, mm-hmm. what's the rule? You can't have no company. Right. So uh. this particular day, because usually I bring the water out, give the kids in the back and go home. This particular it was just Joe. I let him in the house to get the water. It was 3.30. My parents don't get home until 4. Come on in and get the water. So when he comes in, he sees me on my brother's turntables. And he goes, yo, do you do that? And I go, no, because it's my secret. He's supposed yeah. to know that. Yeah. And then he goes, yo, my brother's Russell Simmons. You ever see the Russ Flyers that's up on the telephone poles? And I'm like, yeah, I see that. Well, <laughs> my brother, he works with Flash and this. So now it's becoming interesting. So he's telling me about when Rum was 12 years old, when it was in school during the summertime, Russell would allow Run to go rap and play and DJ on a Curtis Blow show. What? Run was the son of Curtis Blow. 12 years old, Curtis Blow would go, I'm going to bring my disco son DJ Run out here, and he's going to put on a show for you. Come on in. And Run would come out at 12 years old, say a rhyme, and DJ's the cutest thing in the world. Because yeah. you remember, if you remember hip-hop, hip-hop was a hybrid of disco. Right. The early, the fat boys, before they were the fat boys, was the disco three. 
Really? I did yeah, not know that. If you that. listen to it, even had disco style. Yeah, shit, dis- yeah. And I'm the disco man. Yeah, yeah. Like, did, did, well, did Blondie that too does a rap. It on was all did, did the punk rockers. Yes. And the, and the hip hoppers took over the discos yes. after the discos went out of business. Yeah. I woke up one day and all over the world there was this saying, disco sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And it died that day, but another man's trash is a trash is a, one man's trash is another man's trash. They threw away all that music and the DJs hopped it up because it was always bass lines for the rappers yep, and the MCs yeah. to say on. So Rum was Curtis Blow's disco son, he's telling me all of that. So what we would do is he would come to my house, we get out of school two ten. We'd get to my house, it was five minute walk by two fifteen, play basketball till three fifteen, and then from three fifteen to a quarter to four, I would let him in the house and we go in the basement <laughs> and DJ. So I taught Run how to do the flash quick. He knew how to DJ, but he didn't know how to do the flash thing. Right. So I told him that, and one plain and simple, here's where it all began. He picks up my school books where I was writing my rhymes at. And he was like, oh, Daryl, you wrote all of this? And I was like, yeah, it's like a hobby. And, just, and yeah. he was like, oh, this is really good. And then he looks at me. This is in eighth grade, and he goes, when my brother Russell lets me make a record, I'm putting you in my group. So I just look at it. It was like a foreign language. I was like, yeah. what the fuck did you just say to me? What yeah. the fu-? And went in one in and out there because I don't do that. It was just a thought. Right. So ninth grade, we graduated from St. Pasco Baylon. Run and soon to be our DJ later, Jason Marzell, Jam Master J, they went to Andrew Jackson High School in Queens, five minute walk from where we lived at. Mm-hmm. I took three trains and two buses to travel from Queens all the way to Harlem to go to an all boys Catholic high school called Rice High School, 124th Street and Lenox Avenue in the, in the heart of Harlem. So ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, I'm a good student, fine colors, I sent out my resume, I get accepted to St. John's University. I come home, I pick the letter up, it says you were proud to inform you have been accepted to prestigious St. John's University. So the first thing I did before I even ran and told my mother was ran in the basement and wrote a rhyme about it. No. I'm DMC in the place to be. I'm going to St. John's University. Come on. Since kindergarten, I acquired the knowledge. At the 12th grade, I went straight to college. So I wrote that rhyme. <laughs> so that was June of 82. I was the class of 82. <laughs> graduated Jeez. June of 82. In August of 82, the phone rings. It's Joe. Yo, remember four years ago when I said if I make a record, I'm putting you in a group? Yeah, grab your rhyme books. We're going to the studio to make a record. So we went to the studio and we made It's Like That. It's like, like that. Yeah. And that's, that's the way it, it is. is. That's the And jam. we made Sucker MCs. What? And that's how I got in. So even then, I still, it, like, Joe knew what he was doing. Russell's his brother. Yeah. Curtis Blow, Joe's like, yo, we, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to die and sell records. And I'm going to do the, the music thing. To me. to me, being in the studio, and this is how crazy I am now to this day. When I first went, because remember, I was just doing it in my basement. So when Run took me, they took me to Green Street Recording Studio on Green Street, right off of Houston in the city. Mm-hmm. And um, we go down in the studio, and I'm seeing all of the board and, and all the electronics and stuff like that. I start pretending I shrunk down, and I'm inside of the boom box. Right. You know, I'm, I'm you're the imagination. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in there, and I go in, and I put my rhymes down, and Russell takes the record, shops it. Everybody turns us down, but we end up on this little label called Profile Records. Wait, now hold on. Back That's, up, though. Okay. So how do you get to, on this dorky kid in my basement... I go to record and it, you know what I mean? Like well, you, and then right, it's right. like that. And that's the way, well, it, like how the fuck well, did you Joe, guys come when, up with that? When Joe, when Joe put me in the group, Joe, Joe, he saw, okay, this guy, he saw, okay, this guy writes really good rhymes. Mm-hmm. He got all of these fucking comic books. So he must have an imagination Yeah, and he get good grades. So he's smart. He's not going to fuck so off. So originally yeah. Run was right. Run was going to be a solo artist, but he saw that I had something yes. that could assist yes. with his and journey. Wait, so the way that Jay comes into this. That wasn't that, until after we made It's Like That Suck MC. Okay. But Jay they, wasn't even They know yet. each other though, right? Yeah. Run and Jay yeah, know each other from playing basketball in the parks. And Run would go get on the mic at the block party. Okay. You know, I knew Rapper's Delight. Yeah. yeah. Back and forth. My cadence and him. I'm not getting on the mic. Right. Nobody see me do that. You know right. what I'm saying? Because it was my world. You're kind of insecure about it at first. Yeah, right? but no, not even that. It's my world. It's, oh, it's my per- thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. All the rhymes that you heard since I've been in, it wasn't for y'all to hear. Right. This is for me. You only got to hear because Run made me put them on a damn record. They for yeah. me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, 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 Jay didn't come till later. So we we did it like that. We did suck him seas and um we put the we, we get a record deal. So Russell goes crazy. Okay, y'all, you know, we got a record deal on Profile Record. The record comes out. I was actually in my I was in my second semester at St. John's University. It's crazy. In this August, we went to make the demo. Now, to me, it's done. No, we made the demo. I'm a shop it. The only goal back then was to get the record played on Mr. Magic or Red Alert. Because right. remember, kids, I blow kids' mind. I speak at a lot of middle schools and high schools. I said, y'all don't understand some hip hop was only on the radio Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. And LA had it a little better than us because y'all had K Day. Mm -hmm. Y'all oh, had an yeah. all hip hop. We didn't have New York. Well, we didn't That's have that. That's wild to think about that New York did. Where have. it came from, and we didn't have it. Yeah. It was only Friday and Saturday nights. So the goal was to get Mr. Magic or Red Alert to play the record. So that happened for us. You know what I'm saying? And you think at this point, Jeez. when that's played, are you like, well, that was a fun thing to do. Done. On with my life. I'm successful because <laughs> Mr. Magic played me. I'm in school now. I'm in St. John's University. I picked business management because, not because I wanted to be business management. My best friend growing up was this guy named Douglas Hayes. Mm -hmm. We call him, if you listen to our rock box song, the Run DMC rock box song, and we go, butter love now. They called him Butter because he was a fat black kid that could play basketball really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, Butter came up along with Mark Jackson, infamous Mark yeah, Jackson yeah, from New York the Knicks, Knicks yeah. St. John's University, That's right. Chris Mullen. So people would come to the parks to see Mark play and score 40, but they because Mark was JV, junior varsity, and yeah. Doug was varsity, people would wait to see Butter score 50. So Butter was my best friend from kindergarten all the way up to, till we got to college. So... Butter was the guy that told me, pick business management and pick St. John's. Okay. You do what he said. I do whatever Butter yeah, said. Yeah. You run down a block naked. Okay. Yeah. Like he was just, he was yeah. re re one of my best friend ever and stuff. So I get to St. John's University. I'm starting to realize, oh man, this is crazy because this ain't like school. It's not like high school. Why? In college, nobody helps you. Yeah. I was alone on a campus at St. John's University, scared to death. The first thing I did, I ran to the payphone. Call Butter up. Yo, Doug, it's the first day of school. Where you at? Uh, I'm asleep, man. I ain't got no classes today, man. Matter of fact, I ain't got no classes with your ass. Click. <laughs> so I'm scared to death. Yeah. I don't like accounting. I don't like bookkeeping. I don't like nothing that has to do with um, business management. So I go, damn, I got to change my major. My mother going to hate my ass. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. my thing was, all I can do is draw. I didn't even think about music. I didn't say I'm a great writer. All I can, what can you do, Daryl? I can draw comic books and cartoons really good. So yeah. I was going to change my major to anything that had to do with art, graphic design, architecture. Oh, parents don't like that. Oh, no, yeah. no, but here's the worst thing. And if I don't like that, I'm dropping out of school and I'm going to just draw the funnies in the local newspaper. Oh, my God. So that's where I was at. I come home and I'm like, hey, mom. <laughs> Remember that day in August, I, I came home two in the morning because when we, I, when I went to record it's like that and suck him seas, I didn't tell my parents. I came home two in the morning. They was like, "Where was your ass at?" I was it because we would either go in my basement or Joe's attic. Uh -huh. I was at Joe's attic. Don't you do that again, motherfucker! And you, you, you know what I'm saying? You call, you pull over. Okay, who you with? You pull over. Go to the payphone and let us know where you at. When I made my record, I didn't tell my parents where I was at. So now I'm coming home, mom. Um, remember that night. No, first I said, um, I'm going to change my major. I don't want to do business management. So my father, rest in peace, was like, oh, really? So what do you want to do? My mother, she started doing this. So I'm saying, you know, um, I don't like accounting and bookkeeping and stuff like that. I'm thinking of changing the graphic art or, you know, oh, maybe um, um, architecture. So, you know, yeah, that's, you know, architecture is real good. My, mom, my mother was a motherfucker and then I hit it with. And if that don't work, I'm going to just drop out of school and, and draw the comics in the local newspaper. You told them. Yeah. And my mother f raised hell. Like right now I'm scared of Christmas. Yeah. My mom, calm down, woman, this and that. Boom, get your ass back up. So I go upstairs and I'm sitting there like, oh, shit, I'm fucking up this and that. The phone rings again. It's Joe again. 
Yo, Russell got us a deal. We on profile records, this and that, boom, bang. <laughs> the record's crazy. not only playing on Red Alert and Mr. Magic, it's playing across the country. What? Pack your bag. We're going on tour to do shows. And he hangs up. And I'm sitting there. Bananas. Going to do fucking, what the fuck is he talking? I'm trying to figure my life out. I'm a school kid, this and then I realize, oh, Joe won't kill me because I ain't even told my parents this. So Joe's calling every day. Yo, we going on a tour. We got shows coming in North Carolina and this and that. I still ain't tell my parents. And I'm like, fuck <laughs> it. You know, we, you, you hold out. Remember when you was little? You would never tell the thing that you should have just got yeah, it over with. Just get it over yeah. with. And yeah. I've been there. I waited eight days and I go down and, and tell my mother. Y'all know that? Remember the thing I used to do in the basement? Yeah. And we used to take all your records and scratch them up and used to get mad. <laughs> Yeah, well, now, you know that reckon Rapper's Delight? Yeah, my father's like, yeah, they play that at my job all it because my father worked for transit. So all yeah. the young people was playing it. Sure. My mother ain't know nothing about this shit. Well, um, I have one of those. The name of the group is Run DMC, and we have a hip-hop record and this and that. Yeah, I heard a red alert. Motherfucker, my mom start cursing this and that, boom, boom, bang. So I run back <laughs> upstairs, and I'm sitting here. So Joe calls. This what saved me. Yo, we got our first show booked in North Carolina. They paying us $1,500. Click. So I get an idea. All right, let me go try this. I go downstairs and say, Ma, here's the deal. Our first show's for $1,500. Russ, Run said that Russell's going to book us some more shows. Here's the deal. Whatever money, now I'm not thinking career. Right. Whatever money I make this summer from doing the performances for my records, I'll use my own money to pay for my own tuition at school. Oh, wow. Oh, you can go there, <laughs> yeah, go on the road. Yeah, yeah. My mom's whole attitude changed, you know what I'm saying? Because now she can get her pocketbooks yes. and stuff like that. So that was the whole genesis of me oh being gosh. put into the music industry. How did that industry. first tour go? Was it like enough for you, like, we can keep doing it? Or you, I mean, no, it, we, the first, the, it was, we was tearing shit up. Really? Nobody never seen the like of us. Because you got to understand, like you said it on that, early hip hop was based on disco. Yeah. You know, the early, the, the, the early hip hoppers, you got to give them suit. Like, Run DMC, we're not the pioneers. Mm -hmm. The real pioneers is everybody who did it before Rappers the Light was even recorded. Right. So when they did stop making, when they came into show business, them, the first rappers had no rappers to look up to. But Parliament Funkadelic mm -hmm. and the Rolling Stones. So that's where their attire came. And all the disco records, Donna Summer and the Tramps and the... Commodores and all. So their idols in the show business world was them. So that's who they were trying to emulate. When me and Run came along, we didn't dress up. We dressed like we dressed when we were kids. Right. We mm -hmm. wore the Adidas suit, the break dancers. Yeah. So when the world saw us, that was new. Yeah. And not only that, we didn't make disco records. Right. It's, we had beats. Boosh, dab, boosh. That that to bitter unemployment at a record high. We wasn't on no hibbity hop to shaft, dance and shake the hand. We're gonna disco me. We wasn't doing that shit. Yeah. No, we was no. doing yeah. some other people in the world trying to make it my. You know what I'm saying? No, I did that in '86. We was on uh, two years ago. A friend of mine asked me to say like we had a whole different <laughs> shit. But it was whoa. So yeah, it just took off, man. Hello, and thank you for watching that highlight. Uh, if you want to see more of those, we have them. They're provided for you. So enjoy. Just do a deep dive like you're trying to study us. Click on these and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, and then they'll just be delivered to you. You can watch them when they come out. Please do it.